I welcome you on the second lecture on seismic response of pile foundations. In the first lecture, we already talked about introduction, basic concept and Tajmi theory. Today, we are going to talk about NOAA's 3D model, which has been already introduced when we talk about introduction. And there are two papers, first one in 1976 by Nogami in Nowak and the second one by Nowak and Nogami in 1977. And after that, we are going to talk about solution given by Nowak in 1974 and finally, Gustav. So, let us start from this Nowak 3D, so we are going to start from this point and continue with this. So, in this theory, analysis performed separately for vertical and horizontal mode of vibration. So, this is basically similar what we have discussed for Tajmi's theory. Tajmi's theory was only for horizontal vibration and they have proposed for thus both axial vibration and horizontal vibration also. That, however, separately that means there is no coupling between these two. So, when vertical mode of vibration is considered horizontal displacement is neglected and vice versa. And the coupling between two modes of vibration has been not considered in this theory. And the theory assumes soil as a linear, elastic, homogeneous and isotropic layers with frequency independent hysteric damp uh, type material damping. So, there is a now difference is there. So, naturally the question may arise that then what is the difference? Because horizontal the, uh, both mode of vibration are considered the separately. Even for horizontal mode of vibration, there is a basic one basic difference between Tajmi's and this theory that the Novak they have considered hysteric type material damping which is more applicable for, uh, for the soil. So, this is important the damping type of damping is different and the damping considered by uh, Nogami and Novak is hysteric damping not the viscous damping as considered by the Tajmi. So, for horizontal mode of vibration this theory is the same as given by Tajmi except that in latter case viscous damping is considered that means, viscous damping is considered by Tajmi, however, the hysteric damping is considered by the uh, no, uh, so we this is we already discussed. Thus, in the absence of material damping, both theories are exactly the same for horizontal vibration. If we neglect the damping in Tajmi theory and this Novak theory, actually this is like this so 1976 is for vertical vibration, so 1977 is for the horizontal vibration. So, if I consider uh, uh, the uh, this uh, horizontal vibration and neglect the damping then both Tajmi's theory as well as this Novak this, uh, becomes same. So, continue with this uh, now let us uh, talk about that that the it is in the same fashion first you consider the complex soil stiffness and then you consider the complex pile stiffness. So, let us talk first uh, by uh, vertical vibration by uh, complex soil stiffness and for vertical vibration the earlier displacement u was considered for the horizontal di uh, direction, but now for vertical vi vibration here w n is considered which is for the vertical vibration. And other equation is similar and instead of uh, now alpha n is considered again you can see that this is uh, a function of z that means, the displacement is varying along the depth and n is representing again the mode of vibration where the known uh, and dimensionless resistance factor alpha n in this theory is given by the relation here when k 1 and k 0 are again nothing but Bessel functions of this is 0th order and this is the first order Bessel function. Q n is given from this relation and in this relation h n is coming which is given by this relation where h n will is related to the mode n when you vary the value of n the h n will vary where uh, value of n is 1 2 3 and eta which is ratio of V L by V S that is the two uh, velocity one is for uh, uh, the in the longitudinal direction and the shear wave velocity. So, this is given from this relation. So, in equation Q n you have everything here except d V and d S which are damping d V here and this d S is damping ratio for volumetric strain volumetric direction and shear. So, these are defined here in the above equation d are the hysteric dynamic ratios associated with the volumetric and shear strains respectively. So, this uh, equation number 3 a to 3 e gives you basically the complex soil stiffness when you do not consider the pile. Once you insert the pile inside the system 
in that case what you will have the, uh, and let me like you know that the, for the, you can refer this slide for this actually this slide uh, which we have already discussed. So, this slide is also this is applicable uh, for the Novak theory also this is for uh, uh, actual vibration the first one and the second one is for this second one is for horizontal vibration. So, uh, the, with the uh, continue with this. So, what you have the complex stiffness of the soil pile system for vertical vibration is given in this form using equation 4a and you can see the equation 4a is how compact the equation. However, the equation 4a looks very small, but the value of k bar to be obtained need to be from this equation again on this equation h n bar lambda bar uh, and these are uh, given here. However, you need to understand that all the things are known in the, this equation because h n is already defined h n has been defined once you know that let us say if we select the value of n equal to 1 then it will be simply pi by 2 h and then capital H is known lambda bar you can obtain once the uh, properties of the E, e is Young's modulus of the pile here okay? and nu is the Poisson's ratio. So, once these uh, properties are known then lambda bar can be obtained the, then factor gamma can be obtained and as a result ultimately you are able to get the value of k bar. Once k bar is known and k bar is again we need to understand this is dimensionless stiffness parameter there is no dimension of k bar. So, the stiffness dimension is E a into R, R naught where E is Young's modulus of pile and A is the cross sectional area divided by the radius of the pile. So, this equation is very compact to find the value of k stiffness of the pile and naturally this stiffness will keep varying with the frequency this is not going to be constant that is point to be noted it is a function for omega. This was the case for the soil also uh, this was depending on the omega and here omega is coming in this here this is coming in this case to find the value of q n. So, uh, that means at the stiffness of the, uh, the whether you can say complex soil stiffness or whether you say complex stiffness of the soil pile system they are frequency dependent. So, that is the issue need to be understand that as frequency changes their values are going to change and this was for vertical vibration. Same thing has been extended for horizontal vibration where the equations becomes a bit longer than the earlier. So, this is similar equation which we have discussed for the Tazmi and only the thing that now you have uh, this uh, un uh, that, that, that is uh, for this uh, amplitude in the uh, for horizontal vibration. Alpha h n is given from this relation where T n is given from again from this long equation in this long equation q n and s n is coming. There is a one basic difference here like if you see uh, that uh, Mm. Yeah. So, in these equations when we talk about uh, vertical mode of vibration the Poisson's ratio is not coming in picture, but here you will get the effect of uh, because q n and s n yeah one minute. So, d v and d s yeah ok all right. So, this will be in the both the cases. So, this because uh, if you consider, uh, but if you consider the isotropic then uh, in the conditions then d v and d s that is the static damping ratio may be normally considered the same in both the directions for both uh, volumetric and as well as shear strength. So, for the horizontal uh, uh, vibration this uh, the equations are given here q n and s n is also given. So, everything so we can find using equation 5 a we can find the complex solid stiffness and when uh, it is again extended for uh, complex pile head stiffness. So, for this case it is possible to get the pile head stiffness in closed form but it can be derived from the expression for lateral displacement after applying boundary condition to determine unknown constant as needed to calculate horizontal rocking or cross stiffness. When we talk about uh, horizontal vibration then along with horizontal there could be we can have unknown needed to calculate this same th can be used for horizontal mode rocking or cross stiffness. Expression for lateral displacements is given by 6 a where lambda is given by 6 b. In this equation 6 a, a b c and d are integration constants and which can be determined by using the boundary conditions. While f 1 n, f 2 n, f 3 n, f 4 n are dimensionless functions and these functions have the argument lambda z where lambda is given and lambda is basically representing your frequency as omega varies lambda will be a vary and into a Fourier sign series of argument h and z and thus known. So, that means everything is known 
you can uh, using 6 a you can relate the displacement on, uh, on the left hand side and on the right hand side you have the frequency and other parameters and then uh, you have this uh, alpha h n which is the loading uh, uh, which we have already given alpha h n is given from equation 5 b. So, you can find the what is called the horizontal displacement for the pile case here. So, uh, an E i is coming here flexural rigidity of the pile. So, the properties of the pile is going to come naturally it one thing you need to understand when you are dealing with complex soil stiffness the first part no property of the pile will come in picture except it is geometry that means re, uh, E is not required that is what is Young's modulus of the pile or what is the, uh, the uh, material property of the pile. Of course, uh, because uh, the dimension of the pile is required to calculate uh, that is R naught or making the, uh, the, the dimensionless frequency A naught. And one more thing which is important uh, from very beginning, so I think that has been um, uh, like you know, okay, we will discuss later also this thing. So, continue with this. Now, whatever we have discussed uh, so far, uh, different uh, let us have a little comparison before we go ahead. There are a list of uh, simplify approaches, but this slide gives you uh, this is uh, like uh, and this slide is coming from the paper which I mentioned. This is uh, let us say that Maheshwari and Watanabe. So, this is coming from so this should be written. This is not uh, like uh, the new work, this is Maheshwari already published Watanabe. So, this is 2009 publication. So, this slide is from that only. So, what you can see that from this that uh, there are 9 theories has been uh, from different researchers you know, starting from Polas, Penjin, Tazmi, Novak and Novak. So, let me what has been for Polas in 1968 which it was for pile group however, consider only static loads in both directions both direction means both horizontal as well as vertical direction and this is applicable for floating pile. Soil is elastic, homogeneous, isotropic, solutions in closed forms of one can these are the assumptions concept. Those theories which are applicable for floating pile naturally they can be applied for end bearing piles, but those theories which are developed for only end bearing piles may not be necessary that they can deal with the floating piles that is one need to understand. At the same thing suppose if any theory is uh, developed for pile group that can naturally that can deal with a single pile it is obvious but it is not necessary that theory which is developed for single pile will be applicable for pile group. So, Polas was for a static case, so major issue for with the Polas was static loads only. Then in Penjin 1964 it was for horizontal on vibration only and pile group and bearing piles was considered. However, lumped mass models was considered difficult to incorporate radiation damping and inertia of soil. So, that is why this theory was even though developed in 1964, but was not uh, in the acceptable form. Then Tazmi 1969 was the first work on the pile dynamics, but was it was on the horizontal mode of vibration and considering viscous elastic stratum which we have already discussed in detail. Then Novak 1974 which we are going to talk because we have not talked any theory yet for pile group. We have talked about for single pile, we have discussed about Tazmi and we have discussed Novak. So, Novak 1974 was the first on the pile group. Though Penjin also won pile group, but there was limitation for pile group and this was for horizontal uh, uh, mode of vibration and end bearing piles. Soil is modeled as a generalized Winkler soil model possessing inertia and capability to receive dissipate energy. So, what has been considered by Novak in 1974? It is okay for considering the radiation condition as well as uh, inertial effect, though nonality was not considered. So, this Novak 1974 was the first work on uh, uh, like considering the radiation and uh, inertial effect and that one has been uh, extended by many of the researchers including Novak themselves. In fact, in 1976 and 1977 which was the latter work by Nogami and Novak themselves only that was on single pile. This was both vertical and horizontal uh, modes of vibrations that, that has been done separately that is for end bearing piles and this is rigorous method linear based on three dimensional wave equations static damping of soil has been considered by these researchers. Then plain strength soil model has been considered in 1978. All these uh, like uh, you will find the detail in this publication by Maheshwari and Watanabe. So, all these uh, reference uh, citations the uh, details of this can be find out in that paper. Then you have plain strength soil model. So, this was uh, as we both vertical and horizontal separately. 
it is for end bearing as well as floating piles bedrock is at finite depth. Then later Belne et al has done for the single pile and that is for both mode of vibration vertical as well as horizontal and only for end bearing and finite element to produce the soil around the pile and a concession boundary matrix to simulate the far field. No linear soil behavior can be considered. The, so, for the Benle start, so you can say the Novak's work was on the linear case, the, then Benle started to started considering the nonity of the soil. Then Wolf in 1978 is for pile group, both vertical and horizontal, and bearing extended for floating piles. What they uh, they have done that they have considered a soil column below the pile to extend actions of theory of Benle for pile group and for floating piles. Uh, has been done by Wolf and the last one Kenya and Kozol. I think this was the first systematic work on pile group both vertical and horizontal with full coupling has been considered and end bearing as well as floating piles has been considered in this case. So, a very rigorous and versatile approach 3D linear analysis fully accounts for soil pile interaction soil pile, pile soil pile interaction. So, this was so we have already discussed two of them uh, this list Tazmi and the uh, Nogami and Novak and then we are going to talk about this third one now Novak. So, let us discuss Novak 1974 and then we will have talk about one more simpler. So, this uh, this is uh, what we are going to discuss is from a fa very famous paper by Novak in 1974 which is published in Canadian Geotechnical Journal. And perhaps this is the first publication on pile group uh, uh, for uh, uh, for the uh, systematic study considering the uh, the continuum continuum that means considering the radiation condition as well as uh, inertial effects. So in this case, dynamic response of footings and structures supported by piles can be predicted if dynamic stiffness and damping generated by soil pile interaction can be defined. So what was their objective? Their objective was that that there is one side soil another side is pile. So, the soil pile interaction if that can be this interaction effect can be captured in the form of what is called stiffness and damping then those stiffness and damping can be used for further analysis in the same way as done for the cellular foundations. An approximate analytical approach based on linear elasticity is presented which makes it possible to estimate the dimensionless parameter of the problem and to obtain closed form formulas for pile stiffness and damping. So, stiffness and damping all components of the motion in a vertical plane are considered that is, that is horizontal as well as vertical translation rotation of the pile head is considered. So, in this case it is coupling has been considered it is not that uh, like you know that uh, uh, like uh, uh, later on. So, initially they have done for uh, uh, separately for vertical mode and the horizontal mode of vibration and then later on rotation has been also considered. The stiffness and damping of piles are defined in such a way that the design analysis of footings and structures resting on piles can be conducted in the same way as applied in the case of cellular foundations. So, whatever the solutions given by Novak those solutions has been later on very much used for uh, 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 this because they have given uh, the stiffness and once the you know that is dynamic stiffness. So, it can be used like a spring and dashboard and this is one thing need to be understand these uh, dynamic stiffness and damping when we say it is for piles it is not only of the pile actually this is for the soil pile system. So, that means idea is that later on the people have replaced the soil pile system with the spring and dashboard and then rest of the analysis they have done like a structural analysis. So, the task has been made very simple. So, that is why this uh, uh, like uh, so, it is uh, Novak has been as I mentioned earlier also considered to be the father of pile dynamics in the world. So, like uh, so, let us discuss his work little bit which may be initial work on the piles. So, what has been done here this is the problem given here. So, in this problem you could see that this is for uh, uh, what you have two cases one is for horizontal vibration and here you have the rocking. So, when the pile is subjected to horizontal mode of vibration here first of all uh, what is this is end bearing pile. So, this is fixed here and let us say we have considered that uh, pile head is also uh, fixed against the rotation in this case here and uh, it can move here translation. So, when you apply the horizontal displacement or load. So, this is the horizontal displacement given by the 
uh, some earthquake or you can say whatever. So, this point move from here to here, but this remain fixed and the u will vary along the depth. Naturally, the value of u is maximum at the uh, ground which is u h and mu minimum 0 at the base. Okay. Now, the consider the first case in which the pile is ex excited by horizontal transmission of its head or lower end by rotation of its head in the vertical plane. So, here it is excitation for in this case is given by the horizontal translation while here due to rotation. So, what has been done here that pile head is moved, okay, but tip is not moved. So, as a result this is deflected like this, but in the second case there is no translation of the head, however, head is rotated. So, as a result so pile move uh, while not uh, no translation motion, so the it remain here, but it get uh, moved rotation is there. So, this rotation is shown here and again the pile tip there is no rotation here. So, this rotation is will be also varying with the depth and it will be changing with the depth. So, and this effect has been later on by, by the no walk. What the in the first case what is called horizontal translation rotation in the vertical plane. So, in the vertical plane this is horizontal translation and rotation and considering this case when pile element dz undergoes a complex horizontal displacement which is what is called u z t at height z it will meet a horizontal soil reaction. So, if this is the displacement and basically our unknown is this that what is the displacement when you apply some force and if you know the displacement then you, uh, you know already for given force if you can calculate the displacement. So, force divided by displacement will be your stiffness that is the case here. So, what is done for given force uh, for given displacement the Novak they have suggested to calculate the force. So, this is a force and if this force equation 1 will give the force and if I divide this force in equation 1 with the displacement then you can get the stiffness. So, rather than going in that most important is that in this equation which denotes a horizontal soil reaction which is basically force in this case for this reaction SU1 and SU2 are coming where SU1 is for real part and SU2 is for imaginary part. So, what is S u 1 and S u 2 that is the depends on the soil pile geometry and properties. So, in this equation G is shear modulus of soil I, I, I is iota which is you know that iota is nothing but uh, iota square equal to minus 1 or iota root root minus 1. Parameters S u 1 and S u 2 are functions of dimensionless frequency A naught which is given by R naught omega V s and depend on Poisson's ratio nu. The real and imaginary parts of the complex functions is given by the equation 2, where you have equation 2 uh, S u 1 a naught nu and this is given. So, what you can see that in equation 2, oh sorry this g will not come here, g should not be here. So, this should be because this is components of S u 1 only. So, one thing is that S u there have two component one is S u 1 and another is S u 2. So, you have in these two components S u 1 and S u 2 both are functions of A naught and nu. What is A naught here? A naught is dimensionless frequency which is defined here, where R naught is the radius of the pile, omega is frequency of excitation and V s is the shear velocity. A naught is a dimensionless frequency. So, S u 1 and S u 2 both will vary with frequency, but not only with frequency they will also vary with Poisson's ratio. Okay. Then equation 1 this can be written as uh, okay, this S u 1 and S u 2 is like this and or equation uh, what, what is here 2 pi g a. So, you have g this and then multiply by this. So, okay, yeah. So, what is done here basically again g should be removed if we compare want to compare the value of S u 1 and S u 2. So, uh, and then S u 1 and S u 2 uh, like basically you solve this component here and in this component they are divided into two part one is real part and another is imaginary part. So, real part of this equation will give you S u 1 and the imaginary uh, part will give you S u 2. So, ultimately the value of S u 1 and S u 2 are given by the Novak in the form of the chart and as mentioned in this equation 2 they are function of A naught and Poisson's ratio nu. So, the chart is like uh, before we talk about the chart what is the, in this equation q, uh, q is coming in this equation 
and uh, uh, yeah. So, you, you have in this equation the value of a naught h 1 and so th these are given here. Uh, here q is 1 minus 2 nu uh, divided by 2 is 1 minus x naught is a square root 2 which is coming here x naught is coming and yeah q is coming here. So, q is here and then x naught is also here. So, value of q and x naught are given by these relations and h n 2 which is h n where n is n can be 1 or 2 is Henkel functions of the second kind of order n. So, the second kind so, this is uh, when uh, h basically this is second kind 2 is denoting that this 2 is denoting that the both h this is the uh, Henkel function of second kind of the first order and when you have this is 0th order. So, 1 is for kind of order n when n is 0 so it will be 0th order at the first order. Equation 2 was derived by Barnow 1967 parameters were calculated for several values of Poisson's ratio in Bardu by Bardugo and Novak 1972 and which polynomial approximations are given and the parameters s are shown in figure in these figures. So, what you can see in this case that you have s u 1 uh, for 2 cases for nu here nu is 0.25. So, this is the value of nu and this is the value of nu. So, this curve is for nu equal to 0.25 and this is for 0.4. So, you could see that the value of s u 1 initially increases with the frequency. Okay then almost becomes constant while the value of s u 2 which is denoting the imaginary part for 2 Poisson's ratio you can see they are increasing with frequency continuously. The next is for vertical vibration this was for horizontal vibration the Novak also continue with the vertical vibration the dynamic creation of the pile pertinent to vertical vibration motion of the pile had can be obtained using the same assumptions for soil as in the previous case that is same for horizontal vibration and assuming further that the lower end of the pile is fixed then pile the vertical soil reaction acting at height z of the pile element dz as given by Barnov and uh, Novak and Bardugo in 1972. So, this is the equation equation number third what is the equation number third we, equation number third give you the soil reaction and the soil reaction can be find out using g multiplied by sw1 plus isw2 wz dt what you have here dz will be cancelled out from both sides this may be cancelled out so basically soil reaction can be found from this relation where w is a displacement in the vertical directions so if you know is sw1 and sw2 then you can set a relation between soil reaction and displacements so here again basic issue is how to get the value of sw1 and sw2 and sw1 and sw2 are given from equation 4 and 5 and in these equations z naught and z 1 which are function of a naught are basal function of the first kind of order 0 and 1 while y naught y naught and y 1 they are basal function of the second kind of order 0 and 1. So, one thing is very important you have s u 1 and s u 2 s u 1 and s u 2 was function of dimensional frequency a naught as well as Poisson's ratio, but S W 1 and S W 2 which are applicable for vertical vibration they depends only on the uh, uh, dimensionless frequency a naught, but not on the Poisson's ratio that is one thing. Second thing while finding the value of S u 1 and S u 2 you get the what is called Henkel functions that is H 1 H 1 and, and H 2 H 0 and uh, if you see here this equation you get the H 0 and H 1 that is Henkel function, but while in the for vertical vibration you get the Bessel functions. So, Bessel functions are uh, needed to calculate equation 4 and 5 while in earlier equation Henkel functions was com coming and S w 1 and S w 2 are also plotted uh, as uh, earlier in the same figure you could see S w 1 and S w 2 and there is only one curve because they are not depending on the Poisson's ratio. So, with the Poisson's ratio they will not vary the variation is quite similar to for the values of S u 1 and S u 2 and but the values are lower than the earlier values for the even uh, without depending on the Poisson's ratio. Okay. So, this completes Novak uh, the uh, theory of 1974. Later on Gazetas uh, in 1984 given a theory for end bearing single pile and this is very practical. So, what I am going to talk is applicable for only single end bearing pile 
but this will give you a concept which can be directly applied and uh, easily can be applied uh, uh, without much computer programming and that can be easily handled in the closed form solution. So, what uh, uh, let us uh, Gestas have proposed. So, a numerical study is presented of the dynamic reverse response of end bearing piles embedded in a number of idealized soil deposits and subjected to vertically propagating harmonic shear wave aspects. Results for both kinematic and inertial interactions are offered in the form of dimensionless graphs and formula covering a wide range of excitation frequencies and of crucial material and geometric parameters are considered. Practical aspects of the equation of the influence of piles on the effective seismic excitation of a structure are discussed and a case history illustrates the useful of NOS of the presented results. So, Gazetas presented dimensionless graph formulas and then they have talk about a case history also. So, that you can study in the paper, I will give you reference of that paper that you can go with, but what is the basic concept I am going to discuss, rest of the things you can study yourself. So, Gazeta, what is the concept given by the Gazetas is given in this slide and this is very good practical concept for soil pile interaction or particularly of the single pile. See this is a complete problem is given in figure 1, uh, the part 1 of the figure. So, what you have? You have a pile, single pile and uh, here though it has been like you know that uh, uh, pile is appear to be uh, uh, that uh, this, uh, this appear to be floating piles, but this is not the floating pile actually uh, this is going up to the end. So, this is end bearing pile basically. So, ultimately because this is the end product here. So, this is up to going to the end bearing pile and this was basically the theory itself is for on end bearing piles that means the pile is uh, stay, uh, having here at the end. So, what you have in this case what is the problem uh, use you uh, this is the excitation this is excitation applied. So, this is u g basically this appears to be g a u g u g t which is coming which is clear in this slide. So, what you have uh, that uh, u g is the amplitude of ground motion applied at the base at the uh, fixed base and the, which may be due to your earthquake or which may be due to you know seismic excitation which we call a pile is embedded inside the soil as shown here. The length of the stratum is L capital L as well as the, the which is the same of the pile length. So, this is be, being end bearing pile. So, what you have in this pile that uh, uh, this is you apply this motion and you get at the here u naught this is little bit uh, u naught here ok. And once you got u naught what is done here total mass of the super structure is considered on the top of the pile as denoted as m in this figure. Young's modulus of pile is ez portions ratio new for the soil is new mass density of the pile is rho and damping ratio is beta s for the soil. What is done here that the first step is called what is called free field analysis without considering any pile. So, free field analysis means you have a soil stratum you apply at the fixed base some motion and you get the output at the top which is given. So, fixed free field analysis will convert your amplitude u z into u naught this is the value of u naught and this is u z ok. So, so this uh, this u naught divided by u z will give you the amplification ratio for a given frequency. After that this is the second case here in the second case what you have kinematic interaction for the kinematic interaction what we do we apply the same motion at the base and get uh, in the presence of the pile. But when you are considering the kinematic interaction you do not consider the mass of the superstructure as shown in this figure that means mass m is 0 here and in the presence of the pile you get the response of this ma uh, this point as a uk. So, now earlier it was u naught now it converted into uk ukt that means and the, the, the and then then after that if I consider the inertial interaction of the pile then for inertial interaction what you consider you also consider the mass of the pile uh, mass of the superstructure on the top of it and then find the response. So, how it can be dealt ultimately what this was the problem Gustav converted this problem into this here where only the mass of the superstructure is considered and the motion applied to this mass is already found 
as a in this step as a kinematic interaction. And what are the spring constants? They are found using this analysis for dynamic impedance. For finding dynamic impedances of a soil pile system, what is done? You do not consider the inertial force or the mass on the top number one. And you apply the load at the pile head at the same point you find the displacements. So, the load whatever the forces applied by displacement you will give the spring constants. So, the, this way the dynamic impedances are found. So, now we come on the formulation part of this one for this theory. What is the equation number 1? Uh, first of all for a base rock motion u g t is equal to u g expansion i 2 pi f t where f is uh, you know f is a frequency of excitation and this will be that means u g what is the difference this is time bearing and u g is its amplitude ok. And this u g is your applied amplitude then doing the what is called one dimensional amplification theory which is one dimensional ground response analysis and this gives you free field displacement which can be like we uh, have you know that uh, has done a uh, lot of literature is available in the Kramer also for this. So, using this you find the displacement at the top u 0 2 which is called the kinematic interaction uh, the free field response. So, the ratio of u 0 to u z is given by this relation uh, where q is given by this relation here ok and where V s and beta s are the s wave velocity the and hysteric damping in the soil iota I square is minus 1 as we discussed. If you do not consider beta s equal to 0 there is no damping in the soil then this equation 1 b can be simply converted u naught by u z 1 over cos 2 pi f l v s which is referred as a you know that uh, as a f 1 omega if you recall in the Kramer and ground response analysis. So, this is exactly same as a free field re response which tends to infinity at the natural shear frequencies of the str uh, stratum that is when here f n is varying 2 n minus 1 v s 4 l where n is 1 2 3. So, this was story was up to this point now was for free field response. Now, what happens if you, this free field response you do not consider any pile when you consider a pile then this free field response will convert to what is called kinematic response and it will be different than the free field response. So, the kinematic response is represented by because uh, when you insert the pile inside the system then at the same point where you are getting the free field response at the same point you will not get uh, the free uh, let us say at the that means at the same point at the pile head it will get the translation as well as rotation even your applied force is only translation but you get translation as well as rotation and this translation rotation has the amplitude u p and phi p and both amplitudes are presented in the dimensionless factors which is called interaction factors. So, this is called kinematic interaction factors. So, equation 2 gives you two kinematic interaction factors one is for displacement another is for rotation. Here while getting the kinematic interaction factors both response kinematic response has been divided by the free field response u naught ok. So, u naught is free field response if the same factor is divided by the original ground motion u z instead of u naught. So, equation 2 and 3 are exactly same except the difference that it is normalized with u naught in equation 3 it is normalized with the ground motion amplitude u z then in that case it becomes amplification factor. So, one is kinematic interaction factor another is amplification factor for interaction factor you use free field response uh, while for amplification factor you use the ground motion itself r 0 is d by 2 is the radius of the pile which is uh, so nothing need to mention. So, this was the Gazetas uh, hypothesis and what the Gazetas has did they have presented the graph or chart for kinematic interaction factors and kinematic amplification factors. So, rest of the things you can find in the response uh, the reference in the first reference is listed by Gazetas which is published in soil dynamics and earthquake engineering. And initial part of this uh, first these two lectures can be found in the paper by Maheshwar and Vatanami in 2009 in International Journal of Geotechnical Engineering. Novak in 1974 uh, that what we have discussed dynamic stiffen damping of piles has been published in Canadian geotechnical journals. So, you can go through these references all three references are important particularly the second one cover the Tazmis and Novak's uh, 3D model. 
So, the th second reference will give you the complete detail including the table which we have discussed for the simplified approaches. So, with this I conclude today's lecture and uh, it was a bit uh, longer than uh, normal, but uh, I thank you very much for your kind patience and so we have talked today about seismic response of pile foundations. Thank you very much, thanks.